Hello everyone, today I thought we would cover creating a native share button on our applications. This is going to be, uh, I guess, a little bit Rails specific because we're going to be using a stimulus controller, but in reality you could just replace a lot of the logic with document.findElementById's and you would have the same functionality because we're going to be using, I believe, about 25 lines of JavaScript and most of it's going to be boil boilerplate anyways, excuse me. Uh, but the basic idea is we're going to have an application here. Uh, you can ignore my stack overflowing to figure out how stimulus works. Uh, you're going to have a share button on each of your individual posts. You click the share button, and if you're on your desktop, it'll pop up this uh, share dialog. You click the copy link button, and then you can open up a new tab and go to that specific URL. Uh, alternatively, if you are on a mobile device, I'll have a uh, image of that on screen where you can see a share dialog that lets you share it on like Messenger or whatever you have open on your phone or download it on your phone. So to actually do this, we're just going to CD out of here, do a Rails new, let me F11 this. Uh, we'll call it video just to create a uh, application for the video and that'll run the uh, Rails uh, setup process. So the actual thing that we're gonna do here is we're just gonna generate a quick little post scaffold, then we'll generate a stimulus controller and then we'll handle all of the logic. So I'm gonna go ahead and CD into video then inside of video, we're going to do a Rails G scaffold. We'll call it post, give it a title and a body of type text. Go ahead and run that. Next, we can go ahead and do a Rails G stimulus. We'll call this share. This will generate our JavaScript uh, share controller. And remember, anything that goes inside of this, you can just find some other way to run JavaScript in your app and you'll get the same functionality. Once we have that, we can do a Rails DB call and migrate to migrate our posts. So we have our database set up. We can do a Rails S to go ahead and start the server. Uh, we can then come over to localhost port 3000 and we'll get this nice little screen here that looks totally professional. We can come into our app, go into config and our routes.rb and we'll just create the root of the application and set it to be the post controller and the index action, which if you're familiar with Rails, if you come into app controller is post controller, your index action is just gonna be slash posts. So if you go there, you're just gonna see all of your posts with the option to create a new one. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll give it a title of type, or a title that says test, and a body that says case. We'll then click create post. We'll go back to posts, and you can see on our all posts page, we now have one post visible. I'm gonna hit control, shift, and I to open up that web console we just had open. Make sure you're on the console tab. And of course, from in here, you can go ahead and run some JavaScript, like run an alert if you want to and that'll just run that and execute it on your screen. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and close the post controller and the route stutter B. The reason why I'm showing you all this is just in case you're trying to do this in some other environment so you have an idea of what we're doing. So we're gonna go into our views, our posts, and our post partial. This is gonna be the actual thing that has the content of the post inside of it. I'm gonna hit control B to hide the side panel, and then we'll go ahead and we'll set up the uh, post HTML uh, uh, file here. So the basic idea with stimulus is you can either do it as regular uh, HTML or you can do it as a uh, Rails uh, ERB template thingy. We're gonna do both. I'm gonna mix them and match them. It's obviously not best practice to have both, but I figure this is a good way to show you how to format each so you can use whatever you prefer. F11 to full screen this. First thing we need to do is we need to tell the uh, stimulus controller that it's connected here. So we're gonna do a data-controller equals, and then we're gonna give it the name of our stimulus controller. We go into our Explorer, JavaScript, uh, controllers, share controller. We are grabbing the share part without the controller. So we're just gonna call this share because that's the name of our controller. We're gonna leave off the underscore controller part. Uh, because someone that decided to waste their time with this figured out how to make it work without needing the underscore controller. Next, we're gonna do a uh, share URL. So we're gonna say data-share. So this is the name of our controller. We're putting this here because it's a data-name of the controller dash whatever we wanna call it. It's our URL dash value. So in this case, your data dash share and your dash value are gonna be the same. And if you want this to be your apple cart instead, you just make it an apple cart and then you'll just be referencing apple cart. I don't wanna use apple cart though. I wanna use URL because this is gonna be a URL. Uh, so we're just gonna leave it like this. Afterwards, we're gonna do an equal sign. We'll then open up some Ruby code inside of the string. And we'll just say, give me the post underscore URL for the at post. 
That'll give us our post URL. I'm going to control B to hide the side panel. And we can now grab this inside of our stimulus controller. So let's go ahead and let's test our stimulus controller. We're going to come into the connect and we're just going to do a console.log. We'll say this is connected to the share controller. Save that, hit F11. Now when we refresh, uh, we're going to get an error here because it uh, is apparently upset with us for some reason or another. It's missing an ID here. It's kind of cringe. So if we go back over to our posts uh, partial here, it's because it's trying to do a uh, at post here, but this actually needs to be just a regular post. Go ahead and refresh. And now it should be done being upset with us. So if we go back and forth, we're fine here. If we open this up in our inspect element and we come over to here, you can see that uh, right here, it is grabbing the uh, URL, which is uh, locos port 3000 slash posts slash one, even though we're on the posts index page, because it's grabbing that specific ID for that post. If we come in here and we inspect element again, it'll still be slash post slash one. So if we pass that URL around, we'll be able to send a uh, share from our index page that has the specific post inside of it. So that's pretty cool. This little data share helper thing here is really useful. But how do we actually get that inside of our stimulus controller? Well, that part's actually not too bad. I'm not a fan of how it works, but it is what it is. The way you do it is you do a console.log and then you call this.data.get and then the name of the thing you want to get. In this case, what we want to get is our URL. But remember, it is the URL value because of how this is named. So we have to do a URL value to get this. If we save this, come over here, click on console and refresh, you'll see we're connected to the share controller and this is our URL. So that is now being passed to the back end. We, or I guess the, the back end of the JavaScript, if you want to call it that, uh, we can now use this. The other thing I'd like to do is get the title and the body because if I drag over the uh, thing I'm looking for on the Mozilla uh, API doc right here. They have uh, some possible values that you can use. And one of them is a uh, text and one of them is a title. And we're going to be putting both of these in here. So the way this works is we're going to be passing these in, in a slightly different way. If I can open this up again, uh, Effectively, what we're going to do is we're going to pass in some targets. So we're going to have to come into our stimulus controller. We're going to say this has a static uh, set of targets, which is going to be equal to an array of strings. And for now, let's just put in a result. And then we'll come back over to our post and you'll see what we're doing with this result in a second. I'm going to show you how this works uh, with a different setup. So instead of just doing regular old it, uh, HTML here, we're actually going to use some Ruby code. We're going to create a content underscore tag. We're going to give this a P tag comma, and then whatever we want inside of this P tag. So this is just your placeholder text that would go in the P tag. We're going to leave it empty for now. And then we're going to give this a class of result. And then we're going to give this some data colon, and then we're going to open up some braces. We're also going to close these parentheses to match the opening one from the content tag. And then we'll hit enter. Inside of here, we're going to create a share underscore target. We'll set this equal to be the result. Now we don't necessarily have to declare which controller we're using here to be the, uh, the share controller like we did up here because this div is actually wrapping around this content tag. Because of that, the stimulus controller is going to know that this exists because it's inside of our data dash controller equals share up here. So we really only have to tell it that this is a target that we want to access in the share controller, which is called result. We'll save this. We can come over to our share controller and then in here we can do a console.log where we just do something like this dot result target with a capital T save this and refresh. And now you can see we're accessing that P tag in the same way we would with like a uh, document dot get uh, element by ID element by ID. And then let's say we gave it the result ID. In this case, we didn't, we give it a class, but you get the idea. So that is another thing that we can do here. What we're going to do now is we're going to add in a couple more of these targets. We're going to give it a title and a body target. So we're just going to do comma title and comma body. The reason why I don't necessarily like this is because it's just, it's a little bit redundant from what's built into JavaScript with our document finds. 
but uh, I guess whatever floats your boat. Next, we're gonna take the title and the body and we're gonna turn these into content tags as well. So we'll say content tag. This is going to be a P tag for the post title. And then after the post title, we will give this some data, braces, close the parentheses, hit enter. This will be our share underscore target, which is going to be the title. And then we're gonna do something very similar for the post.body. We're just gonna change this to be the post.body. We'll change this from a P tag to a div maybe, and this will be our body right here. And that should be good to go. Now, once we have all that, we can come over here and refresh, uh, but nothing's really gonna happen. So what we wanna do is we could uh, essentially at this point, just implement the functionality if we wanted to, it's really up to you. Uh, what we can do is we can say, let's do a async share function. We'll pass in a E for the uh, event. We'll say E dot prevent default. And then we're going to ignore these suggestions from GitHub Copilot. Next thing we're gonna do is they suggest creating a const data. I don't know where it is in here, it doesn't really matter. So we're just gonna do that real quick. We'll say const data, is, uh, well, I guess const share data is what they call it, is equal to some braces. It's gonna have a title, which is going to be equal to, or it's gonna be set to this.title target uh, dot value body target dot value and URL is going to be equal to this dot data dot get URL value. We can do all of this and then we'll uh, do a console dot log the share data refresh. Uh, and we do need to actually call this async share from somewhere. So back inside of our actual uh, uh, post here, we're going to do a button underscore two a share button, we'll give this a empty URL with some data. And in here, oops, in here, we will do a, uh, let me see, we're gonna do a action. So this is gonna be a controller action inside of the share controller, and we call it our action share. So we're going to do a uh, on click event where we call the share controller and the share action. Again, this is another thing that could be done with just a default uh, you know, event listener, but whatever, we're gonna use stimulus for this. Now, if we click this and hit share, you can see that it is, uh, oops, this isn't right. Uh, you can see it is working, it's calling this, but our title and our text are undefined. So let's come back over to our share controller. The body is working here. But this should probably be named body as well. But inside of our post.html.erb, this, uh, actually it's gonna be in here, right? This isn't dot value, this is going to be dot text content, I believe. So if we refresh this, click the share button, we're now getting the title and the body down here. Uh, so this does need to be the text content, okay. Now that we have this, we have all of the data we need. The only thing we need to do is actually uh, call the native share functionality. For this, we're just going to do a try block and then at the bottom here, we'll have a catch in the event of an error. And uh, we'll just do it in here. So if this works, we want to do a navigator.share where we do the share data. Important to note, because we're doing an await here, you want to do this as an async. Uh, that's why it's set to async is just because it is awaiting you to click something in the navigator share uh, dialog box. Once that's done, we'll then do a this.resulttarget.text content. If you'll recall, the result target is just a MTP tag we have down here. And that's just going to tell us whatever the uh, data is right here after we hit share. So in this case, uh, it will just say whatever the placeholder was in the Mozilla documentation, MDN, MDN shared successfully. If there's an error, we will instead do this.resulttarget dot text content and we'll set it equal to the back ticks or the tilde with an error colon dollar sign brace error for a little bit of template magic and then that'll set up the error so now let's go ahead we'll hit the share button after we refresh and you can see mdn shared successfully and it opens oops it opens up that share dialog i can hit copy link i'm sharing the first post here let me go into a new tab 
and that takes us directly to the first post. I can do something similar. If I click show this post, I hit share, I get the link and I open it up incognito or something and I paste it in here. That takes us directly to that post. So there you go. That is the native share functionality done. You see how to connect your stimulus controllers to your HTML here. And you also see how to instead use, uh, you know, some Ruby code as opposed to doing it inside of a uh, div that goes on for seemingly ages and ends up being multiple lines long. So yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, hopefully you got something out of this and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.